Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be diving into user properties. We're going to talk about what these are and I'm going to show you how you can extract these from the exported data in BigQuery. If you haven't already done so, I recommend you go back and look at the previous video, which was all about event parameters. Link above. Many of the techniques we're going to be showing you today were introduced in that video and the process for extracting data from the user properties is almost ident identical to the event parameters. So once you have an understanding of that, come back here and pick up this video again. So what are user properties? Well, with every event, you've got the option to send event parameters, which add additional context about that event. But you also have the option to send user properties, which give you more context about the user. These might be set uh, once per session uh, or when certain events happen, but once they're set, they can be constantly um, fed through into GA4 so that all subsequent events receive those user properties. The data is stored within the user properties record. So just like the event params with the user properties, you can send multiple with every event and they'll all be stored within this same user properties record. Here's an example of the user properties field. You can see it's made up of a number of different fields nested within. So we have the key, the string value, the int value, the float value, double value, which isn't actually used in practice, and the timestamp. Let's have a look at how this looks in practice. So I've run a very simple query here against the sample data set. Today we're using the, the gaming data set, which Google made available to us rather than the e-commerce one. The reason being is this data set contains user properties as opposed to the e-commerce data set, which does not. So user properties aren't something that are collected by default by GA4. They're something that has to be implemented. And so not every property that you come across will have these pieces of data. So within the data here at the bottom, you can see as normal, each row represents an event. And for that event, we have numerous columns containing the data. Here's the event params, which we looked at last time. Let's scroll over to the right and take a look at the user properties. So here's the user properties. You can see there are numerous different properties all collected within this one event. Most of the values for those properties are stored here within the string value field. There's one here where the data is stored in the int value. But it's really down to the implementation um, as to where the data will end up. I've written a very simple query here. All this is going to do is it's going to pull out a list of all of the user properties which are contained within this database and then count the number of times that each one occurs. So take a look here on line four, you can see we've specified the table we're going to query from, but then after that, we're making use of the unnest command. With the unnest, we're passing in the user properties and then the output of that, we're gonna label UP. That just means we can refer to it in other places within the query. The unnest command is essentially just going to take all of that data that's contained within the event row and it's going to expand it out so that they're all essentially on individual rows. That means you can actually work with it just like you would with any other uh, column within the database. But due to the way the data is stored, we have to use this unnest command to get it out. So you can see up here on line two, we're selecting up.key which is just the, a reference to the user properties key field because we labeled the, uh, the output here as UP. So if I run that now, you'll see we've now generated a list of all the user properties and counting the number of times that each one occurs in the database. As I said earlier, these aren't standard properties. These have all been implemented for this specific app. So because it's a gaming app, you can see there's reference to things such as quick play, number of levels available, 
uh, it talks here about ad frequency so we'd obviously need to have some context about the data to understand what it is but we can make some assumptions just based off the names here so now that we know what user properties there are within the data we can write a query to extract specific ones that we might be interested in so here i want to extract a list of all of the ad frequencies so i've written here on line two a subquery which essentially just extracts the string value from the unnested user properties where the key is equal to add frequency. If we go back to the data here, you can see we have the user properties dot key field. So it's going to look within that field, look for any instances where the value is equal to add frequency. And then it's going to extract the corresponding value for that field. So you can see now at the bottom, we've extracted all of those add frequency values. In the next query here, I've added some additional fields. So we're going to extract the event date, event name, and the user pseudo ID. Then again, we've got the add frequency. We've also added here the first open time. So you can see with this one, we're pulling the value from the int value field rather than the string value field as we did with the add frequency. If we go back and look at the data, we can see for the first open time property, the value is stored here in this int value field. So we need to make sure we're referencing that in order to pull the data out for it. I've also included down here in the where clause, a condition to only extract data where plays quick play is equal to true. And you can see down at the bottom here, we've got our results. Rather than having all of those properties contained within one field, now we've split them out into their own. And we can include as many of these as we want here. And that basically is all there is to user properties. You can see it's very similar to event parameters. The method for extracting the data is exactly the same. Just watch out to make sure you're referencing the correct value column for the property that you're querying and that way you'll ensure that the data gets extracted as you would expect. In our next video, we'll be looking at querying multiple tables within the export. So see you then.